And I wonder, a sensei or other people here, what are your opinion on, let's say we live in a Buddhist society that's majority Buddhist. Um, how should we approach people who actively and aggressively slander the Dharma? Should they be exiled? Should there be laws against? What are your opinions on active, aggressive? Ah, I think, uh, you know, when you give too much power to the government, doesn't matter it's a Buddhist government, or uh, atheist government and so on, then he can do some good things, but also some bad things. And that power that you give to the government, that supreme power, today can be used to protect Buddhism. Tomorrow, you never know. It can go against Buddhism. So, I think we should, uh, I prefer, I prefer, you know, I don't know uh, which society is better, which political ideology is better. I can't know it. And I'm sure that each political ideology that is the result of human samsaric mind is, uh, is not perfect. Uh, you can find fault in all political ideologies. But I prefer to live in a society where is freedom of religion and freedom of opinion. And there can be freedom of um, being against, uh, uh, it should be freedom of being against or writing against this or that religion. I'm okay with people who write against Buddhism, speak against Buddhism. You see, I'm okay with them because I might, I also have things to say against uh, Islam, for example, Christianity, and so and so. I don't want to be punishment. Uh, for insulting uh, the Buddha or the Quran or the sacred test of Buddhism or Islam or Christianity. So I think people should, should be free to say whatever they want unless they attack others physically or abuse them in any way possible. So unless there is an abuse, direct abuse, uh, I don't think government should intervene, see, because that's dangerous. The power of a government is dangerous, you see. And um, I think it's better and more healthy uh, for these uh, bad people, for people who had, have such be bad behavior, to be naturally isolated. You know, in a healthy society, bad elements are naturally isolated uh, uh, by uh, the wisdom of others. So I think it's better to try to develop a society in which uh, people become smarter, wiser, uh, no, more knowledgeable, more polite. And then such elements that uh, insult others or uh, have various crazy ideas can be naturally isolated. Otherwise, it's very difficult. You see, if you are against somebody as a government, uh, you might make those guys more powerful. Uh, so it's very complicated. But at personal level, family level, relationship level, I, sheen, I think we should not tolerate people who... Uh, go against Buddhism, you see? We can uh, let them go and try to become friends and uh, partners with people who at least have a respect towards Buddhism and towards our choice as being Buddhist. But uh, at government level, as I said, we have to be very careful. I don't think there will be... I think the power given to a government is very uh, dangerous. I think people, individuals, should have more freedom, see, uh, by law. For example, the freedom to defend yourself. It's a natural law to, to be able to defend ourselves, our temples, our homes, our families, our religion. So if anybody should try to abuse us, we should be able to defend ourselves. That should be recognized by law. But also as it right. pertains to this Sangha, we've had many people come in and try to, I don't know, spice things up 
they, they we've had people who wanted to disagree with the way our beliefs are practiced in Amida G Sangha. We've had people who wanted to straddle the fence on being Christian and Buddhist, who would praise Jesus and compare Amida to Jesus. We we've had we've had people like that in the Sangha. But that's the thing. We're I think that's why a lot of people think we're fundamentalists and maybe we are because we stick to what the teachings of Shinran and the masters of Jodo Shinchi taught. We don't add a bunch of woke stuff and, and a bunch of weird ideologies and astrology and Hindu gods like many other Buddhist groups do. It, it, in terms of environment, you know, and I'm, I'm talking about the Sangha, this Sangha. You need to have an environment where you can come or go at will, but you need to have an environment where you can, your, your faith practice will be respected and you will have access to knowledge about how to practice your faith. Does that make any sense? Yeah, uh, that's what I'm speaking about. Uh, people should have the freedom to associate with other people that think the same, that have the same interest, uh, that want to follow the same path, that have the same orthodox understanding. You see, uh, this freedom is very important. And uh, each Sangha should know uh, what they follow. In our case, uh, Amida G Sangha has very clear principles in regard to general Buddhism and Jodo Shinshu specifics. We are very orthodox in our approach to general Buddhism and Jodo Shinshu in particular. And these are this is who we are. So uh, we don't need the government we don't want the government or the world around us to tell us what to do. Uh, people who are not like us, they can form their own organizations, you see. Uh, but we should have the freedom to accept among us those who are like us and reject and uh, reject the membership of those who have different views, see. And uh, nobody should intervene in this. That's very important. We, sh we Each community of people should make its own rules. As long as these rules do not abuse others, mentally or physically. You see? That's very important. Uh, yeah. Fortunately for us, we live in an environment where we can do that. Yes. Let's hope it will be like this in the future. In Romania, I have freedom of religion. And I don't want... Uh, it's very important, I think, that religious communities do not depend on the state, on the government. Because if you depend on the state, then you might receive some funds from the state, from various uh, politicians that run the state. Uh, but uh, the state through those politicians, might also impose some things on you because they give you money, you see? Uh, and also, uh, I'm against state sponsorship of religion because a community that uh, tends to rely on outside help from the state, for example, it becomes a weak community, especially in time. Perhaps at the moment, uh, we might be happy, for example, if we receive large amounts of money from the state. But in time, we get accustomed to receiving funds from others. And that makes us weak. Uh, uh, a healthy Sangha, a healthy Buddhist community should uh, have members that um, uh, are able to, to make efforts to support the Sangha and the goal of that Sangha, 
members that when they meet with difficulties, they will contribute, they will make efforts to, uh, uh, to make the Sangha and the temples survive and prosper. And uh, see, that's very important. Uh, we should not become weak. And usually a community becomes weak if it, uh, if it can't find strength among its members but always looking from outside help. It's very important. So the only thing that we ask from the state is to be left alone. Leave us alone. Uh, have some laws that allow us to practice our religion freely, to associate ourselves freely according and organize ourselves according to the principles of our religion. And we should decide who is member and who is not on the base of our own principles. And then we don't want anything from the state. We should be self-sufficient. The temples that we build, the statues that we build should be built on our own money, on money from the support of our members. Our teachers uh, should be supported by uh, the Sangha. And if a member in our Sangha has difficulty, others should try to help. See, it's important. <clears throat>